Hello and welcome to the Twin Fusion Show. My name is Christy and this is my twin sister. I'm Kathy. And today we're going to talk about um, something that's very concerning to us. Um, there's a spirit in the church that's gotten into the church, especially the charismatic church, called the Kundalini spirit. And what that spirit does is it mimics the Holy Spirit to make people think that it's the Holy Spirit. And what it, in the end, its goal is to lead people away from Jesus. It pulls people out of Jesus and away from him. And um, some people we know that have operated in it no longer serve Jesus. So it's a very, um, it's a very deceptive and crafty spirit. And today we're going to just talk a little bit about um, what the Holy Spirit is and then what the Kundalini spirit is and how you can tell the difference. At first, I, um, there's some people that throw the baby out with the bathwater. They don't think that the Holy Spirit manifests at all um, today. And um, so when they see the Kundalini Spirit, they think that they, when they see Holy Spirit manifestations, they think it's the Kundalini Spirit because they don't think that the Holy Spirit should be giving um, manifestations like drunkenness and things like that. So I'm just going to read a few scriptures about when the Holy Spirit first came so that you can see that there is all kinds of manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, he told his disciples, he had them sitting in, um, staying in a, an upper room and waiting for him. He said, behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you. That was the Holy Spirit. But you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. When we become believers, um, we get the Holy Spirit in us. That, that, was the, that was the promise. Before Jesus died and rose again, only a few people got the Holy Spirit, um, certain prophets and things like that. But after he died, it was available to all human beings. So um, that was a wonderful thing. But it hadn't come yet after he died until, was it 120 days after he was resurrected that the Holy Spirit came? Well, they were all sitting waiting for it. And on Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. They were up in that upper room. And suddenly there came a, from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of a fire distributing themselves. And they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So what happened after that... Um, all the disciples were speaking in tongues and all the people had gathered there. It was during Pentecost. It was one of the Jewish feasts and Jews come from all over the world for the feasts. And when they were speaking in tongues, they were actually talking in all these other languages. So all these Jews from all these other places said, oh my gosh, they're speaking in our language. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. And um, then Peter started preaching and um, they, what happened, when ha what happens when the Holy Spirit comes on you sometimes is you laugh, there's laughter and joyfulness and, um, Sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you're um, you get drunk. You get, like they, say, drunk. they say you get drunk, but what happens is the, the power of the Holy Spirit overloads your electrical system and you, you get drunk and you fall down and you get you know, you know, wheezy. Like what happens when alcohol takes over your, um, your system. But um, anyway, so Peter, Peter was preaching after that. And one thing he said, he stood, and there's proof of that. He said, taking his stands with, the 11, he raised his voice and declared to them, men of Judea and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on the mountains, both even the bond slaves, excuse me, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs in the earth below. So um, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes on people, there can be that drunkenness and laughter, but um, what happens is people can prophesy, they see visions, and, and people can minister to one another through these things. And um, that's, that's what's, it, it's these sort of manifestations that are mocked by that false kundalini spirit that we were talking about, are these manifest, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the laughter, the drunkenness, um, the prophecies, the visions, yeah. things like that. They can do a counterfeit of that. 
and make people think that it's the Holy Spirit that's among them. And sometimes when um, the Holy Spirit is really strong, you feel the love of God so strongly and you feel that, 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 that elation of that, of that love from him. But, um, and the Kundalini spirit mocks that as well. So I'm gonna have Kathy talk a little bit about the Kundalini spirit and um, what it looks like and what it does. Yeah. Okay, the Kundalini spirit in Sanskrit means the coiled snake. And um, it's a, it's a uh, feminine spirit located at the base of the spine, believed to be the force or the power of the divine feminine or the formless aspect of goddess. So um, it would attach to your spine. And then um, in Hindu tradition, um, they believe that it would wind up your spine through all of the chakras up to the crown chakra. And then Shiva, who is the male form of the God, would come down and meet, they would meet together. Um, and, and Shiva was a destroyer God. He was considered destroyer. And just like Apollyon, just like um, the beast, you, you know, see that in every pagan tradition. Yeah, like an Apollyon, Apollo type God. And the feminine and then the, the masculine. feminine and masculine, you know, Isis and Osiris and Horus and, and all of that. So they, there's a, the, the mimic, a mimicry of that. And um, it's believed that this energy in the body, when cultivated or awakened through tantric practice and meditation, is believed to lead to spiritual lib liberation. So they think they're going to be able to, their spirit will be liberated if they do that. And yoga, focuses on, if you practice yoga, I mean, the tradition focuses on um, awakening the kundalini spirit um, so that it can coil itself up, you know. One thing is we all, one thing Jesus said was that the thing about Jesus dying and having a resurrected body was that, that his body was redeemed. When, when we're saved, our spirit's redeemed. Our spirit is free. But our bodies are still connected to the earth and in some ways because of certain frequencies that flow through our DNA because of losses and pain and negativity there's low vibrations that flow through our DNA our bodies haven't been redeemed yet but will be when when we have our resurrected body so um, everybody if you look at all these pagan practices everyone is trying to get out from under this body <laughs> and that Kundalini spirit promises Hindus and and you know that they're going to get free from this the bondages to this time space continuum that we're you know bound to here and jesus really was the only one who actually has done it <laughs> because he has a resurrected body we're still working it out but um but that's the thing about these these pagan practices it's it's like that <laughs> so yeah talk about john of god um there's this prophet called the John, John of God. He's, um, well, first of all, let's talk about Allison. Okay, um, our friend, our friend Allison's a prophetic intercessor and she gets really strong. Um, when she prays for people, she can like read your mail is what we call it. And um, she had a friend who was um, kind of Pretty obsessed, sick. Yeah. sick all the time and was having a lot of problems. And she said when she, she saw a snake wrapped around her spinal column, and um, she didn't know what it meant. She just said she saw that. She said, that's the binding spirit that's on you. And it come to find out that this woman was um, practice, a practitioner of yoga. And, um, that, and it was indeed the Kundalini spirit. It's a demon spirit that was wrapped around her spine. So she, she, you know, she prayed for her and she got deliverance. She and got Allison did it. And got, got freed and got, was healed. And Allison didn't, didn't know anything about yoga and didn't know anything about Kundalini. Mm -mm. And this woman was practicing Christian yoga, but yeah. she still got the Kundalini spirit. Yeah, so, so it, it doesn't you. matter. The same thing happened to me. I mean, it, I was practicing with a practitioner I thought was a Christian and, um, you know, I thought, okay, so that's fine. They're a Christian practitioner, you know, but it's the, the practice of yoga itself it doesn't matter who is the practitioner and who's teaching it you will engage in that um with that kundalini spirit and then there's an open door to bring that spirit into you so um so don't, press the don't don't do yoga don't do yoga it doesn't matter who the practitioner is kathy had a big devil a couple of weeks after that that followed her around for weeks and i remember, did, yeah. I remember we were walking through the park one time and i felt that behind me and I'm like, Kathy, we got to get rid of this thing. Yeah, and we couldn't, and we we did. couldn't well, no, you, it, we didn't. But I remember one time I was, I was actually at a, at a Kim Clement meeting. He was a strong prophet and he, they were, they were worshiping and playing and all of a sudden that thing just darted. But it was, it was on me for a couple months and we could not, we tried to get rid of it. We couldn't. So um, yeah. it was really attached there and it was a really strong spirit. So um, just be aware. 
of that of, of that and did, did you talk about John of God? No. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, you know, Oprah had this guy, his name was John of God. He was this prophet. I don't know if he was considered Catholic or whatever. He was in Brazil. And at his meetings, people got, people got miraculous healings and people got homes and they got money and they got all sorts of things. Anything that, you know, a lot of people that had something wrong with them, they got what they came for. Mm -hmm. And, um, so he had a lot of followers. He had a lot of followers all over the world. And I, so I, I watched some of his meetings that were on video, and I noticed that there were angels walking around in the, in the thing, touching people. And I was like, Lord, what's up with that? Who are those angels? This couldn't be your angels. This guy doesn't even know you. And, um, but there were a lot of the same manifestations that happened in a healing service that Christians run. I mean, there was a strong presence of a spirit. There were angels walking around touching people, healing them. There were, um, you know, there were, all, you know, all these miracles. You could feel the electricity in the air. It kind of felt like a meeting, a Christian meeting, where there, where there's a lot of healing. There, there's a lot of power for people to get healed and get delivered and stuff like that. Um, I think some people even got delivered from demons. But it didn't feel right, though. No, it was weird. It was weird. It was not the Holy Spirit. I'm like, how is he doing that? It was it just really confounded me. Anyway, it turns out that the guy was indicted for child um, pornography, child trafficking, child human trafficking. He was a pedophore, pedophore um, Satanist. <laughs> but here he is operating in all these miracles and things that were, were a copy of what the Holy Spirit does in, in Christian meetings. So um, it just shows you that there's a, there can be a false spirit. He, there was no way on earth that the Holy Spirit was operating in his meetings. It was creepy, but they were creepy. But there were those manifestations happening. Yeah. So um, it can be mocked, it can be men with, all, I mean, almost undistinguishably, unless you really know the Lord and know the word. And another, another manifestation of the Kundalini spirit is this bliss, like this bliss. Like, like if, you, if you've ever gone to a rave or done the, the street party drug ecstasy, I mean, that's when people feel the love, they always feel they love each other, the they elation. feel the bliss, that elation that comes from ecstasy, um, which is a certain part, of, certain part of your endocrine system. I thought that um, yeah, the, and um, that's what, that's kind of what a lot of, there's, there's some Christians that are experiencing that bliss all the time. And they get in, it's called the finished works movement, and they're always drunk or high in the spirit. And, um, and it's manifesting, they're talking, they start out talking Jesus, but, um, you know, about a year in, they all end up in the new age, um, human potential movement. Um, one, one, uh, one key thing that you can take away from um, t as, a, as a clear sign that it's not from the Lord is that they start, um, the people that get into this um, bliss thing, this bliss thing, the, the, the finished works thing yeah. is they say, okay, Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. So, uh, so we don't need, we don't have sin anymore. So there's no need for repentance. No hell. No, no hell. Demons. No demons, no okay. satanic kingdom. You don't have to pray. Um, we're divine. So all you have to do is, you know, realize who you are. And then when you meet that and you become that, then everybody else around you will know who they are. And then there's not going to be any more problems. And so it's 100% human potential movement, 100% Kundalini spirit. But they call themselves Christians, which they're not. They're really a cult. And um, it's kind of, they kind of use this Bible called the Mirror Bible. And they do read scripture, but it's, it's, just, it's like the Mormons. It's just like this fake, it's just like a cult. It was rewritten by this guy, this the mirror CD Bible. freaking guy named uh, Francois Truffra or Truffra whatever. It's Truffra. some, some goofy dude that, some you know, has name. off, off, off teachings. And, and tell them about that with that mirror thing. But the whole mirror thing, yeah, the whole mirror Bible, the whole point of it is to, that we look at ourselves in the mirror of Jesus. Like he's so, Jesus is perfect, right? He is perfect. So we look at ourselves in the mirror and then we reflect back and realize that we're, we're perfect. perfect too. We're divine. We're just like he is. Okay. So, um, and, and to, to pick a point of what she said earlier, when I look at Jesus, you know, yeah, I see how beautiful he is and how perfect and he how is much he loves me. and how much he loves me. But I see when he's really near, I'm, I see how much I am not like him. And the things that need to get taken care of in my life. So like, it'll be just like when the Holy Spirit comes, when you have, like, when you have, when you're in a meeting and the, the night before and you're in this meeting and there's a, the Holy Spirit's near and everybody's laughing and people are getting drunk in the spirit or whatever. And then the next day 
you come home and the fire of God is on you and he starts dredging up all this, all this iniquity and all this stuff that you need to take care of in your life. Well, these people, they, they just are blissed out all the time. They don't think they have to deal with anything. They don't think they have sin anymore. They don't think they have to repent everything. Jesus did it. We're done. We can do whatever the hell we want. And so, you know, it's, you know, but that's the Kundalini spirit, that bliss. And they're always talking about the drunkenness. And I have a girlfriend who's into it. And she's like, so drunk, I'm so drunk. And she's like that all the time. But her, her marriage ended. Her marriage ended. There's, there's, there's just a lot thing, of stuff. One thing you really see is a lot of destruction that follows people that operate in the Kundalini spirit. Yeah, that follow that mirror Bible. Yeah, the congregations that follow that mirror Bible. They, there's just divorce and sickness and weird dissociation and brokenness yeah i mean we we were there i mean we we checked it out we thought maybe this was a valid thing of god 10 years ago we we tried but it just got into uh it just got into weirdness and then, that's where we first really saw the holy spirit really the first place we saw the kundalini spirit was in toronto we um our pastor was the head of the guy that was ahead of toronto john or not and um before toronto became a big movement and um we used to go up there uh, between christmas and new year and we were the ministry team because john or would take us his team and just go away and just, just rest because rest, they were so busy so we would like just just props i minister to people for a hundred thousands of people and then at the end of the um the thing well one thing we saw were a lot we saw holy spirit manifestations and then we saw kundalini manifestations or I mean, people barking spirit. like dogs and i mean just some, good, some goofy stuff. stuff i mean it was real in feeling of the holy spirit and real holy spirit laughter and stuff like that and joy and things like that but then there was some weirdness too but there were people that we were praying for that we tried to correct and they wouldn't be corrected you know they they wanted their their goofy stuff and some of it was just flesh but some of it was kundalini yeah and um john wimber was the head of the vineyard back then that was a vineyard at the time and um my pastor was the overseer of the vineyards in that region john or not in the whole toronto thing so he had him you know look, in, it look into and... it and stuff like that and john wimber decided because um john or not who was the head of the movement wouldn't correct the the wrong stuff. the wrong stuff he decided he was going to pull out of the vineyard and, and not be associated with it and um that was unfortunate because then there were a lot of people that were in the vineyard that didn't even get the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> probably a lot of vineyards today that didn't. Yeah. But um, you know, John or not probably could have been a little more. Maybe it did make, with, you know hindsight's twenty. Yeah, so but anyway, we did see both operating together at the same time in a Christian church. Yeah, and and now even so, we're seeing it operating in some of these very large global ministries. You yeah. know that have big worship teams and. Um, stuff like that, and there, there's a, as a mixture of the kundalini, because it, because it can seem like the Holy Spirit when you're, when the, the euphoria and when you're worshiping. Why you wouldn't that, that be person, God? Why wouldn't that be God? Because it's such a good feeling, but, um, but it's just like it's like you know them by their fruit, because you know, like the wheats and the tares, the wheats and tares they grow up together and they, and they look, look just the same. the same when they're growing up, but when they get the heads of fruit on them, then you know the difference, and you can pull up the tares. Well, that's how it is in the church. There's just a lot of these mixture in these some of these charismatic ministries, some even to some you know some illegal things that are going on in these ministries because that spirit is not yeah. won't allow them to be they won't allow themselves to be corrected. Yeah. Now, I mean, there's a you know, we're doing the southern ministry that's got this big you know, I don't know pyramid on its prayer chapel kind of mixing the two you know pagan with, pagan the, Christian. with the Christian and it's just you know it's it's not. Um, sometimes not easily detected, sometimes easily detected. That's why we just wanted to make this video because we've seen such a mixture, especially in the current charismatic church that we just wanna, we wanna say, hey, um, there, there are two different spirits operating. Um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater if there's a Kundalini spirit because the, the Holy Spirit really does manifest in this hour, like Christy was saying, mm -hmm. you know, with the power that came on high. So there's a real manifestation of speaking in tongues, signs, wonders, and miracles. The laughter, holy the laughter, laughter, drunkenness. Joy and drunkenness. Yeah, but like we awesome. said, next day, if you're getting drunk in the spirit. If you're whacked. The next day you, you're gonna if you're not feeling the repentance and stuff like that that wasn't the holy spirit, wasn't the holy spirit. <laughs> if you just got whacked and you feel like you're drunk, drunk and you just want to go drunk get drunk again it's like you know when we when there we might got, be an addict spirit out, yeah right? because <laughs> when we got whacked in the holy spirit i mean it was rough fire the, the next day. week yeah. the next whole week dealing with yeah. that stuff it's not fun yeah. It's not fun looking at your stuff yeah. and it was so you know it's so it's it's the fruit, it's the fruit. you know it's yeah. the fruit like i said wheat and tears grow up together they look the same but when you see the fruit of it 
these finished works group, these guys, half of them don't work. They're just getting drunk all the time. And um, tell us about that about in um, Sedona. Oh, there was this gal, um, Kathy and I used to hike in Sedona all the time. I'm, I've always lived in California. She lived, used to live in Arizona. So we were hiking in Sedona all the time. And there was this gal that we went to a crystal shop. We were just looking at crystals and um, she worked there and um, we were talking to her and um, she was talking about how she was just absolutely sick of all, she was a new ager, not a believer at all. Mm -hmm. And she said she was completely tired of people getting blissed out all the time. They're just getting, friends. they're just in bliss and they won't, they don't work. They don't, they don't do heal. anything. They don't heal. They don't deal with their stuff. So, so she was, who's not a believer, was dealing with the same Kundalini. We were spirit. commiserating about the same thing, thing in the church and in the new age, because what was manifesting in the church was the, was the Kundalini, Kundalini spirit, spirit that was happening with these new agers. Yeah, exactly. And we came, we, you know, that was the Lord brought her to us at the right time. Cause it was around that time yeah. we were like, you know, we were checking like, it out and seeing if it was God saying, and Lord, yeah. 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 Because it is, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty tricky. Like I said, weeds and tares. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the, so the takeaway is, Test the spirit. Test the spirit. Um, 1 John 1, 4 um, says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false spirits have gone out into the world. Now, the way you test the spirit is to ask them who Jesus is, because the Holy Spirit's main point and purpose is to bring glory to Jesus. And this is what John says. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. So it's you ask period. that spirit. Period. <laughs> so you ask that spirit, do you believe that Jesus came in the flesh? Yeah. An indwelled man. Yeah. And if they if they don't answer you or they can't tell you no, because that's one thing that's a spiritual law. They can't they can't lie about it. Yeah. That's a spiritual law. And um, so they they if they lie, if if they just don't say anything or take off you know it's not not the spirit, spirit. so please test every spirit yeah and uh, one thing too the holy spirit when you're when you have a manifestation or you feel the holy spirit it's in your solar plexus this is where he is he resides he resides there yeah the kundalini spirit it's more here on the um pineal gland you usually sense it in your head it's not deep within your spirit, spirit yeah. man so um one time i was at a meeting with a christian guy and he was talking about he did an exercise that come into the light come into the light we gotta we just gotta visualize and come into the light and he's one of these drunk drunk you gotta drunk, be drunk, 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 all the time, drunk drunk all yeah. the time yeah so um so he was like working with the pineal area and um we know from well experience and other things that if you if you're operating just if you're pulling spiritual activity out of your pineal gland out of your pineal the area in this area that's connected to the second heaven, which is Lucifer's realm or the realm of darkness. So um, if, if that's the only place you're doing it without the Holy Spirit, then um, you could be just pulling stuff from the, the second, second heaven, heaven, which is usually what happens. Anyway, in this meeting, that's what I was, that's what happened. I said, okay, Lord, what are we doing here? And so I, I closed my eyes and I said, okay, we'll pull from that. I said, well, I'll look at the light. I saw the light. The light was right here. It wasn't here. There was no witness here. The light was right here. I saw the light. Because <laughs> like you see could it. see in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, and I felt the light. <laughs> I didn't feel it here. I felt it here. And that's all here. That's another difference. Yeah, and that's, yeah, an, that's, that's another way. To another way to, to kind of experientially you can figure it out. It, yeah, you know, Cause it's tricky. It's tricky. It, it, it's tricky. It, it is a pretty good, at least in the manifestation part. Like we said, manifests very similar, kind of very similar manifestations, but you can tell by the fruit. The fruit. So yeah, test the. You not only test the spirits that come to you, but you test the fruit of and the, the people, character of the, the character people. of the people that are walking in it. Yeah, because because just without exception, without exception, people that are people that are operating have assumed the the Kundalini spirit. They they lack character. There's destruction in their lives. They, it, it's all they they've walked away from Jesus. Yeah. Most of them. We we have our hearts have been broken. By friends of ours who've gotten caught up into this and are, are have almost completely you think yeah have almost completely walked away they, they have i mean it's a cult i mean they really are in a cult it's not christian doctrine at all and, and it's, it is human potential movement. and it's pre prevailing it's it's really got a foothold in the church in the mm -hmm. mainstream church it does so it's the rob bell scenario half yeah. god said you know yeah. it's the half god said yeah it's the same half god said there's a hell half god said there's, there's a, a devil half, you know, god said you have sin you yeah. know it's 
Yeah. You know? the, the Kundalini spirit will always drag you away from Jesus, always. Always. And, and the Holy Spirit will always, always pull, pull, pull you towards Jesus. Right. So, so if, you, if you don't know the word, if you don't know your Bible, get in it because that will check everything. And, and you if, can align everything mm -hmm. from that. And if you see it for, in your church and it kind of is in your spirit, you're like, there's something wrong here. Ask the Lord. Go to the, go to the word with the Lord. Sit down with the Lord. Get into the word and he will show you mm -hmm. what you need to know. Yeah. He is faithful. Yeah. He's coming for a pure and spotless bride, and he's the one who makes us spotless. But he doesn't want you to be deceived by any deceiving spirits, and that's the main reason for this video, because yeah. it's really been a burden on our hearts, and we've seen the deception. Yeah. So, Okay, Lord, well, we thank you that, that you are going to show people their hearts and show them if they've been deceived by any spirits, especially this kundalini spirit, and um, show them the ins and outs of it and um, the truth of your word regarding it and regarding all um, spirits that are not the Holy Spirit and, and, and experiences that they may have in the spirit realm that might not be of you yes, and Lord. they might need to check with you on. And Lord, we thank you that you are coming for a pure and spotless bride and it's your job to make us clean, to make us whole. And Lord, you know that this deception is out there. So we thank you that it is your job to bring this, bring a purification of your church and to bring the clarity of all these things, Lord. And we bless you and thank you that you are faithful to complete the work and that nobody that the Father has given you will be taken from your side. Amen. Nobody. And so we bless that and we thank you for that, Lord. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You Bye. guys have a great day and we will see you next week.